Hey everyone, this is Sid Kala. I'm the co-founder and CTO at Roll. Um, and today I'll be talking about social tokens as user-generated capital for a Web3 first world. Let's rewind like 20 years towards the start of the online social world. Uh, pretty much everything we know about the social world today from sending tweets, posting images, sharing videos. All of that activity very broadly can be classified as user-generated content. Um, in that world, the value that's generated by individual creators or uh, communities or groups uh, pretty much mostly gets captured at the platform layer. Um, that's why companies like Facebook are valued at close to a trillion dollars, but the users obviously don't nearly make as much. Um, but we're now entering a world powered by blockchain technology um, that's pretty much like based on the ethos of Web3 that's read, write, own. Um, you know, this really allows creators not just to make content, uh, but really to make their own capital. Uh, Crypto is leading the shift from user-generated content to user-generated capital. Um, we can now create capital around content, uh, which is pretty much the world of NFTs that you might be familiar with. Um, and you can create capital around community. Uh, that's the world of social tokens, really. Um, so crypto uniquely enables digital scarcity uh, by owning social tokens in a community. Uh, you own a piece of that community in perpetuity. Um, social tokens are becoming pretty much increasingly necessary as we enter into new computing paradigms uh, like the metaverse, for example. Um, we cannot make the same mistakes that we made with traditional Web2 platforms, uh, where the platforms have all the power and the community pretty much has none. Uh, I mean, it would be pretty devastating if Facebook were to become the dominant metaverse platform. Um, it's just too much power with a single entity. Um, instead, what we really want and what we really need is like communities to easily be able to flow uh, between different metaverse platforms, really, uh, without losing their identity. Uh, so that you're not, um, you know, like you're not uh, tied to the platform, the underlying platform itself. Um, social tokens allow communities to capture most of that value that they create um, and then move it across the web, uh, whether it's traditional Web 2 platforms, up and upcoming Web 2 platforms, Web 3 platforms, or even like the newest um, you know, metaverse platforms. Um, yeah, cool with that. Uh, now let's talk about some basic economics of social tokens. Um, the first thing that we talk about is uh, to ensure that there's a supply cap, um, again, like with the ethos of uh, you know, crypto enabling scarcity. Um, this is in contrast to some DAOs that have chosen to um, mint as many tokens as they deem necessary uh, based on governance. Uh, but we believe this is, this is like a flawed model for the long-term success of a community uh, because it's not respecting basic property rights uh, because a majority of the people in the DAO can vote to essentially make someone else's stake worthless. Um, and that's not a good uh, guarantee for someone to be able to uh, invest their time and money into something. Um, instead, by having a fixed supply, what we're really ensuring is that you can own a piece of this community forever. Um, as an example, you know, like all the social token that we issue at Roll has a maximum supply of 10 million units. Um, so say we are minting like a dollar IOSG token um, on Roll for like this amazing community that IOSG has curated over the years. Uh, what this means is that if you were to own, say, 10,000 of these IOSG tokens uh, with a given cap of 10 million, that means you will own 0.1% of the supply. And no one can take this away from you. Um, social tokens are also fungible tokens, which means that one IOSG token uh, in our example is the same as any other IOSG token. Uh, they're also divisible, uh, up to 18 decimals usually. Um, so this means that they are uh, a superior form of uh, money inside the community. Um, this is as opposed to uh, you know, some other primitives like non-fungible tokens or NFTs, uh, which are unique per token and therefore become very hard to divide and then also like transfer value between one to the other. Uh, once a social token is established inside a community, it can very easily function as a medium of exchange, pretty much as money inside a community, uh, both for large and small transactions. Uh, so for example, the original promise of the web was around microtransactions uh, and that never panned out, uh, but that will be possible with social tokens um, inside of each community that adopts it. Um, the initial distribution of social tokens is also a pretty important uh, primitive. Uh, so you want to reward people who have already contributed in making your community valuable. Um, and after that, you want to incentivize behaviors that the entire community generally deems valuable. Um, so in our example, that would be people who have already made IOSG uh, successful up to this point, uh, including the community that they're curating around, um, around themselves, the, the founders, um, any other investors, the teams, everyone. 
Um, going forward, the community can then decide who to reward. Um, so for example, um, you know, let's say a new project comes into the fold, um, you know, they can reserve a certain tokens for uh, that project. Um, or if someone were to put an event like this together for the broader community, that's pretty valuable. Um, and so they earn uh, some IOSG tokens. Uh, we also found that vesting is a pretty key economic primitive for social token communities. Uh, this ensures that the creator is in it for the long run uh, because most of the economic value that's created is in the future um, and not the present. Uh, it, it really just like helps reduce short-term thinking from community leaders, uh, encourages building for the long-term health of the community, um, just like aligns incentives for the long-term essentially. Um, at Roll, our default duration right now is about one year, uh, but we'll let the communities choose their own vesting period at launch. Uh, so, you know, again, like in the iOS suite token, like they can decide to vest for one year or five years or even like 10 years. Uh, once that's set, that cannot be changed so that people ex know exactly the, uh, the whole distribution and supply schedule over time. Once that initial distribution is figured out and, you know, you have some ways to get that into the community to earn um, social tokens, what really comes after like a very fascinating thing is markets. Um, this is really where the power of decentralized finance or DeFi uh, really shines. Um, you can plug your social money into uh, all of these DeFi protocols like an automated market maker or AMM, uh, something like Uniswap for instance, uh, to provide some initial liquidity. Um, and this creates a market which can then give your social token a dollar value. Um, in the traditional world, you would need a professional market maker, right? Like Citadel or uh, someone to be a market maker. Like, um, But in the DeFi world, we can use these automated market makers where everyone can become a uh, become a Citadel, essentially. Uh, it'll also earn a small trading fee that's typically 0.3%, um, while taking on some risk of impermanent loss. Uh, but this is also something of value you're contributing to that community. Um, to give you just a sense of what the markets really are, like just at Roll, uh, we've issued about 400 different social tokens, and about 10% of them, so about 40 of them right now, like have an active market uh, in this way. Uh, the total market cap of all of these is about 250 to $300 million, uh, depending on the market. Uh, this is just with 40 social tokens, right? So think of a world in which this scales to tens of thousands or even millions of different communities. Uh, so it's like a very valuable primitive that um, people can use. In the traditional social world, um, things like likes and retweets are really the currency of these platforms. Um, and, but in this new world that we're enabling, like liquidity is what matters. Uh, so you can incentivize your community to start providing liquidity to your social token uh, by rewarding them with additional social tokens uh, for the people who provide liquidity. Um, what this really enables is like create deeper liquidity pools in the market, makes it easier for people to enter and exit the community by buying and selling the social tokens of that community. Uh, but at the end of the day, ultimately the price is uh, of course determined by the market. Um, even if you set the price too high or too low, uh, people are going to buy and sell and make decisions based on that. Uh, when there's more liquidity, uh, the price will just converge to the market consensus quicker. Yeah, and um, another thing, uh, you know, like um, we're kind of hearing a lot about DAOs or decentralized autonomous organizations, um, and social tokens really are the most basic form of DAO um, that you can really form. Um, and over time, you can progressively decentralize this DAO uh, while you have the time to set the direction uh, that the community should uh, go in, especially in the early days, which is really important. Uh, it also integrates very well with NFT communities that have capital assets in the form of NFTs like art or gaming. Uh, so people with the social tokens get the voting to decide, for example, at what price to list or what kind of NFTs to buy and so on. Uh, once your social token has that dollar value, you can send a portion of that to the DAO uh, under the community's control. Uh, the community will then collectively decide where and how to deploy this value. Remember now that there's a dollar value with the markets. Um, in our example, an IOSG DAO can then decide to buy tokens in another DAO or um, you know, just, just like a swap tokens with another DAO, um, or you could purchase some high quality NFTs that the community believes in. Um, we've even seen DAOs, uh, you know, social token DAOs invest in equity in startups. Uh, so pretty much how the treasury is used is uh, very specific to each community, but it's a very wide open cam uh, canvas. Um, the assets that the DAO hold are, of course, not limited to social tokens. It can hold ETH, NFTs, um, you know, like other tokens. What just matters is that the community collectively governs this. Um, over time, uh, the IOC team, which was initially in control, can pretty much completely decentralize the system, right, by giving the majority of the IOSG tokens to the DAO, um, just letting the community thrive, uh, pretty much independent from that initial um, issuance that we saw. 
a big part of what really makes social tokens valuable is, of course, also the ability to use them on existing platforms, right? So that's uh, your Facebooks and Twitters, uh, but also like future platforms. Um, we strongly believe that the next billion users in crypto are going to come through these uh, existing communities that already exist on platforms today, right? Um, and the future generation of the platforms will natively integrate social tokens. Um, so all this is to say that, you know, the infrastructure layer becomes extremely important. Um, so which is why you know, a company like Roll, for example, is really building those APIs for Web2 platforms. Uh, so if you've ever seen things like sign in with Twitter, sign in with Facebook, uh, in the future, you'll see like sign in with Roll. You connect your Roll wallet and all of a sudden that Web2 app uh, pretty much can behave in these Web3 primitives that we just talked about. Yeah, so in conclusion, um, you know, social tokens really allow you to create capital around a community. Um, it's not tied to an underlying platform like Facebook. Uh, they can move from the physical space to the digital space, to the metaverse, to any other like future computing spaces, all while retaining their economic value. Uh, they can trade free freely on the open market. They can plug into uh, DeFi primitives like uh, you know, automated market makers. They're very interoperable with DAOs and NFTs, uh, and they can um, really like, move capital from one platform to another very easily, uh, whether it's Web2 platforms or Web3 platforms. Um, social tokens really are a new asset class that we believe will redefine uh, the social web over the next decade. Uh, thank you all very much.